My name is Emer Murnahan and I am a civil engineer. I'm delighted to welcome you to my home city of Belfast as part of ICE 200 Bicentenary Celebrations. We're here today to explore the new dry dock at Belfast built in the 1960s. But first, let's ask a few pertinent questions. What is a dry dock? A dry dock is a structure enclosed on three sides. Once a ship or a vessel is floated in, the fourth side is then closed off uh, by a gate or a flap valve or something called a caisson. And then that enables the, the structure to be drained, allowing the ship actually to settle um, on support blocks. The dry dock is then a safe place in which to complete construction or carry out repairs. But why did Belfast need a new dry dock? We already had five dry docks. What was the purpose of a fifth one? Why not just extend one of the existing dry docks? So to consider the response or the answer to this question, we have to look at the world of shipbuilding. The owners of the port in Belfast were keen to maintain their position in the shipbuilding world. They were happy to continue building uh, battleships and cruise liners, but actually what was becoming significant in the world of shipbuilding were super tankers to carry bulk commodities such as oil. These super tankers were wider than any provision that we had in the port of Belfast. So the new dock then was designed to support these super tankers. The construction of a supersized dry dock would not only secure the future of shipbuilding in Belfast and support the local workforce and uh, the extended workforce within the supply chain, it would also underpin the local economy in Northern Ireland. It was indeed a great idea. The next important question to be answered is, what size should this supersized dry dock be? Super tankers at that time were about 203,000 deadweight tons. So our ambitious harbour commissioners agreed that the new dry dock at Belfast should be 335 metres long, 50 metres wide, and about 11, almost 12 metres deep. The length of the dry dock would hold the equivalent of 30 long buses. You might know them as the Boris bus, but we know them as the Wright bus because they're made in Northern Ireland, just a short distance from here. We could also fit three and a half times Big Ben into the size of the dry dock. So you can see that it's of huge proportions. These super tankers were huge. Our dry dock in Belfast is huge. The new dry dock in Belfast, built in the 1960s, is still in use today, mainly for ship repairs. And you can see the cranes behind me in the background. Developed, designed, and constructed by civil engineers. It took 36 months to construct. It commenced in 1965 and completed in 1968 at the cost of 7.2 million pounds. Today's equivalent would be 130 million, so I think we got good value for money. At the height of construction, there were 800 men on site every day. It was a challenge to the contractor to actually get the size of uh, experienced workforce, but rather than go and import construction workers into Northern Ireland, the contractor recruited locally from the large number of unemployed that were available in Belfast and the surrounding area at that time. The project was a huge success and all involved were delighted with it. The ability to adapt is critical to sustaining the port of Belfast. While some of the building and dry docks are still in use, others have joined the burgeoning tourist industry that is now part of Belfast. Indeed, Belfast city itself boasts a titanic quarter. Today, civil engineers continue to support and evolve the infrastructure required to support the strong modern city of Belfast, which despite its troubles past, is emerging as a vibrant, innovative and forward-thinking economy. If you'd like to play your part in helping to shape the world, perhaps consider a career in civil engineering. Personally, I love it.